Hello folks, so in this video I'm going to show you very quickly how to use these sheets on your piano keyboard to play some lovely tunes. Okay, here we go. So here's a first wee example of a tune, Ali Bali B, um, otherwise known as Coulter's Candy. Um, and you'll see on the sheet we have some letters at the bottom here and then this is the rest of our keyboard a simulated <coughs> simulation of a keyboard uh, just like we have here and here we have the notes in order to play the tune and uh, the numbers up above are an idea of which fingers you should perhaps use so here's number one two three four and five so not all the sheets have fingering marks, but um, some of them do. Um, and you will notice that these ones are quite well spaced out. These ones are very close together. And then we have this line. Well, all that means is that there's a slight gap between these. These ones are very quick. And then this one you hold for a little bit longer. Um, these ones even longer. Now... If you have a look at this, you'll see there's hundreds and hundreds and millions of, of keys here. But uh, we're only going to use one, two, three, four, five, six. So the main thing about these sheets is you need to know where to put this on the keyboard. So you'll see this is all black, so it's going to be around about the middle. So what you have to do is see there's three black notes here in a space either side and then two either side. If you look at the keyboard it always goes two, three, two, three, two, three, and on and on and on. So this is, um, we're going to use this part of the keyboard here to play the tunes. So we're going to put this here and you'll, what we're going to try to do is match up these three with three together like this. There you go. So if you set those on top of there, one, two, one, two, three. Then from here to here are the notes that we need to play this tune. So you can forget about all the rest. These are the ones that we need. <clears throat> so if I play this tune for you, here's a C, here's an E, here's a G. And then this bit's very quick. And then a long note there in the next line. There you go, that's the idea of how to play, how to use the sheets. So here's another wee example. This one is When the Saints Go Marching In. I'm sure you all know this. When the Saints Go Marching In. So same procedure, we're going to find, we only need five notes this time. I'm going to find the three black notes together and match it up with the three here. If you want, you can actually tuck it down in behind the keys like this. And you might not see it from there, but if you're sitting down, you can see the notes you need right in front of you when you're playing. The other advantage of this is it actually covers up all these buttons, which are very inviting to small children. And actually, a bit of a nuisance in the classroom. Anyway, so we'll cover those. Put the sheet here. And here we go. When the saints go marching in. So these little dashes here are going to help you count. Pom, 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 two, three, four, five. And so on. So here we go. Two, three, four, five.
there you go. So the numbers, as I said, are there to tell you which fingers to use, but in the very beginning, you might want to forget about that. And there's enough to think about with just matching up the, the letters. Anyway, you can work up to doing it with the, all the correct fingers. Let's um, actually, whilst, whilst you're there, I'm just gonna pull this sheet down because what we've got here is exactly the same tune, but with musical notation. So some of you might be already be able to read that, but anyway, it gives an idea of what music looks like. And um, in this very early stages of playing the keyboard, it's just another way of doing it and familiarizing ourselves with what music actually looks like. So the same thing, we've limited to these five notes, match it up, and then you just follow the notes. just as we did before. Anyway, that's a lesson for another day, musical notation. Let's look at something else. Okay, here's something else. This is an exercise that um, I suggest that you start with your kids or yourselves, if you're having a go yourself, um, just to get the fingers going and also to use the right fingers. And you'll notice on this sheet that it has a treble clef up here. <clears throat> And that um, is really indicating that we're going to use our right hand with these sheets anyway. Sometimes you see this clef and you use your left hand. But um, for, the, for these sheets, this is just an idea that we're using our right hand. So again, it's all black, so we're going to stick to the middle here and same five notes, match up here. There we go. So I'll just quickly play this tune for you. There you go. And I would suggest that you tell your kids that they have to do this at the start of every lesson. Five times, at least. Okay, let me put that one to the side for a minute and bring this other one forward. And you will see it looks almost exactly the same, except uh, we now have um, a bass clef here. So this is indicating that we want to use be using our left hand. And you will also see that the letters are now green. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to match it up here and here, but in actual fact, we're going to take it down an octave. So we're going to use a lower part of the keyboard. So we're going to take it down to here because this area is going to be green and this area is going to be black. So here we are, it's now down here and it's exactly the same as tune as before, but this time we're starting with our little finger like this. showing you what the difference between the bass clef and the treble clef. And an introduction to the different colours that we're going to use here. So for this wee clip you'll see that I've, um, I've laid out all the different colours we use for all the different octaves of the keyboard. Um, you'll notice that uh, we started in the early examples with this these black keys here. This is the octave that we use probably most. Um, some some of the melodies, they might dip into the green area and they will possibly go right up into this blue area here. Um, as yet, I don't think there's any that go beyond that. Um, and often when we start using our left hand, if we're going to be playing with two hands together, then we might go right down into this red area here. Um, but for this um, particular um, keyboard method, these are the colours that we're using for this program. So red, green, black, and blue. So that's just um, to show you how it's all gonna work once we start using some of the more complicated sheets. Now remember that um, the sheets are not, um, they, they're designed so that the kids can go off on their own or you can learn this on your own. We're not gonna teach um, how to read music and things like that in this particular um, program. It's just a case of getting the kids familiar with the keyboard and um, perhaps they're very young, there's, there's, um, there's even, even 
they've maybe even just learned their letters and might be starting very young, but at least they can do it. It's really a matching exercise from the sheets to the colours and the letters. Um, but we can get quite far with that, just getting them used to using their fingers and find, making themselves aware of where the actual notes are. So really that's the only purpose of this whole exercise. So we will use these four colours just now. I'm going to take these away now. So here we have um, the C major scale. Oh my goodness. So you'll notice if I put this using our method, get the three black notes and the two. You'll notice here that we all of a sudden we have one blue um, letter. We need to have a blue one because there are black C's in this and there are also blue ones. So we need to identify the, the difference between a black one or a low one and a high one. So here um, I'll play the C major scale. Down. And this time we're going up and down. There we are. Okay, so if I just pull down this one here. You'll see that this one has the treble clef, but this one here has the bass clef. So we're going to go down into the green zone, down here. Watch it up. There's our bass clef. So we're going to use our left hand. <clears throat> here we go. There we go, that's your C major scale with your right hand and with your left hand. So here we have, um, this time we have an A minor scale. Not a minor scale, it's actually A minor scale. So it's the A minor scale. So here we have a treble clef. Um, so that means that's our right hand. And this time we're going a bit higher. We're going away up into the blue zone. And the other thing to notice here is that this particular tune has this hashtag symbol here, which in musical terms is called a sharp. And a sharp, um, just as a note that um, raises one of these notes by a semitone or to, and takes it up to the next note, which is usually a black note and not always. So here we have a G sharp. Can you see that there? There we are. So when we get to that point, we're going to have to hit this black note. So. And back down. Back up and down. Now I've just noticed that there are three dots missing from here. I'm going to have to go and fix that. Anyway, that's the minor scale, which is introducing the sharp sign. Okay, okay. So when you get into the pack of all the tunes that are up there, which will get added to regularly, hopefully that's the plan anyway, you will find that there's some, a lot of exercises and scales, but also some tunes that the kids um, probably will quite enjoy playing. And here's a tune called He's a Pirate. From the, th it's a theme tune from the Pirates of the Caribbean. And um, so this one here is going to introduce this sign here, 
which looks like a slightly uh, deformed letter B uh, or B, um, and that's called a flat sign. And what that does is the opposite to a sharp sign. That takes a note and it takes it backwards by one step. So here's a B. So this note here is going to be B flat. So again, another black note. So if I put this all in the, the right place, um, these are all black notes. We only need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven notes here. So when I play this tune, we're going to follow this pattern here, <coughs> obviously, as we did before. And then the first time, we're going to go all the way to here. Now this, these double lines and the dots mean that we have to repeat everything there. So we go back to the beginning and we play it all the way through. But the second time, instead of playing this line, we play this line. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean. So here we go. Pirates of the Caribbean. Second time. There you go. So, most of the tunes will be tunes that the kids are aware of. They'll know the tunes. So, although this, um, these little dashes and gaps are there to help you with the rhythm, uh, they're not an exact science, so they just give an idea that there's a little gap here. Um, but hopefully the kids will know most of the tunes and <clears throat> so rhythmically we're not really teaching them anything to do with rhythm. Okay, so here's another example. Um, this is slightly more complicated. You'll notice in this tune, you kind of shove your granny off a bus, that we have um, black notes, we have green notes and we have blue notes. So we're going to span slightly more of the keyboard here. We'll match up our three notes here, black notes. So we're going to go right to the green zone and the blue zone, but mostly in the black zone. So here we go. So this is a little bit more complicated now. It's, it takes a wee while to be able to follow this. Anyway, here we go. There we go. So that's um, slightly more complicated, that one. So in this um, final example here for this little video, um, we've got, we've come back to when the saints go marching in. But here we've got, if, if you can see this, we've got a treble clef and a bass clef. So in this tune, we're going to try to play with two hands at the same time. So uh, behind here, I have another sheet which says, when the saints go marching in, left hand. So what we're going to do here is, <clears throat> we're going to put this, match it up here, like this, in the black zone, and then this, this bit here, 
We're going right down to the very bottom. This is the red notes, the red zone, which was down here, if you remember. So we're going to put those notes there. And this one here. And hopefully, if they've all practiced the tune well enough, we can maybe start adding in these three notes. Only three notes for the left hand. Mostly C's. One part where it goes to a G here, back to C, and then F, and then a quick G, C at the end. So we can get our fingers on the right place here. Um, but this is quite a challenge to get both hands together, but I'm sure they will get it with a bit of practice. So whenever we get to this G, we're going to hit this C at the same time. And we're going to hold this C. Um, so every time we get to two notes together, we're going to hit two notes together like this. Hey, there we go. So now we're playing with two hands together. Actually, before I move away from this, let me just show you one other thing quickly. On some on this keyboard, um, we have this button called single here. So what that does is it changes these notes at the bottom, the bottom third of the keyboard approximately, from just single notes into actual chords. So I press so I get one single finger and I can get a whole chord. So it makes it a nicer sound for the kids. So if I put this back here, um, and I'll show you what I mean, if I play the two together. Then they sound like professionals. How about that? So there you are. That's all there is to it. All you need to do now is find some time to do a bit of practice and get your hands on some of these sheets. You will find these sheets at the YMI Making Music channel in Microsoft Teams. Here. If for any reason you don't you can't have access to that, then you can also find some of the sheets at this website. Okay, away you go and have some fun. We'll see you again soon. Bye for now.